Hey, it's Nolan Mathias, and this is the Thrive and Give Show, where we talk about how to thrive in your personal finances, in your personal life, and in your business, and all we ask in return is that you pay the favor forward. And today we're talking about the seven biggest drains in your finances. And at the very end of this show, I'm gonna tell you my biggest personal financial drain I've ever had in my life, and the lesson I learned from that experience. So stay tuned till the end. But before we get into it, do me that favor, hit the subscribe button and the like button so we can get this information out to as many people as possible. And keep in mind that whether we get it out to more people is completely up to you. If you hit that like button, the Google algorithm will see it and it'll more people will see it as a result. And if you don't, well, this message isn't going anywhere, so it's completely in your hands. Please do me that favor. So let's get into the seven biggest drains in personal finance. So let's start with number one, which is wasted food. Now think about this, 69% it is estimated in North America of all food is wasted, all edible food. So this means, you know, the stuff that you could have finished at the restaurant, this means the produce that went bad in the fridge, the milk that went sour, 69% of all food goes wasted. So think about that from a personal finance perspective. If you're spending, you know, between restaurants and between groceries, $1,000 a month, up to $690 of it is completely being wasted. Now, maybe, maybe you aren't one of the people that's wasting all that food. Maybe you're only wasting a smaller percentage of it, but let's face it, we all do it. We all throw out food that's questionable, but probably edible. You know, if we just, if we just ate it a little bit faster or we thought a little bit more about whether the food was actually going bad, we could probably save ourselves a heck of a lot of money and probably take a little bit of pressure off the food supply chain as well. Now, keeping on that same line of thought with food, the second biggest drain in people's personal finances is fast food. Yes, that's right. The food that you get to drive through to the drive through window and grab and, you know, pick up for what seems like a really, really cheap price can end up being a huge expense over the course of somebody's year. Think about it this way. You know, if you're going to Starbucks every single day and there's two of you and you're spending $10 per day on coffee and two or three times a week you hit the McDonald's or the Wendy's or the A&W or maybe the, the faux restaurant and, you know, you're spending 10, 15, $20 at a time. Well, over time that adds up. And what we find is that a lot of people end up spending significantly more than what they thought they spent when they added up at the end of the year. So, you know, that that really cheap $20 meal could end up being really expensive. And when you put it against, you know, what you could get at the grocery store as an equivalent, like let's say you want to get a burger and you go in and you buy the pound of beef and that's five or six bucks and it makes you five burgers and you buy a few buns and you buy the cheese and the lettuce and the mustard and the ketchup and the pickle and the tomato, you know, all the, all the accoutrements, you know, for basically 20 bucks, you can get five, six burgers. If, if it's even $20, it's probably closer to $10. So, and the quality is significantly better when you're cooking it at home than it's going to be when you actually get it at the fast food joint. So think about that. Not only are you saving money by cooking it yourself, but you're also getting a better product. And I'll give you a tip on how to cook a great burger, okay? Barbecue, forget it. The way you wanna cook the burger, cast iron skillet. A Little bit of salt, little bit of pepper, no filling, just beef, and you can get that burger pretty damn close to what you would get at that fast food joint. Our third biggest money drain for those who still do this, and if you do this, you're insane because it not only affects your health, but also your money, is smoking or vaping. Now this can be a huge line item for people who are smokers and vapors. We've seen clients in our mortgage business who spend five, six, seven hundred dollars per month on vaping and smoking. In fact, a lot of smokers get this, when we do a budget for them, they won't put the fact that they smoke on the budget. I mean, they walk in and you can smell it on them and you go, well, you did, you filled out your budget, but where's the cigarettes? And they go, well, I forgot about that because they don't wanna face the actual cost. And if you can eliminate just that one thing from your budget, that smoking and that vaping, you're not only doing a huge favor to your health, but you're doing a huge favor to your personal finances. So get rid of the smoking and the vaping. Drain number four in your personal finances is subscriptions. So that Netflix, that Crave TV, that Apple Music, that newspaper subscription, that workout subscription, the gym subscription, you know, whatever it is for you, subscriptions, those things, you know, that they get you by saying, well, it's free for the first five months. And then all of a sudden we're gonna start charging you an insane amount of money for it. Those things are expensive. My wife, just yesterday, we had this fight because she had a Sirius XM bill. And you know what Sirius XM does to you every single time you call to cancel? They go, 
why don't you take it free for a year? And then you know what happens? All of a sudden they turn on the bill a year later when you've completely forgot about it and you're back to paying 60, 70, 80 dollars a quarter for that radio. It's absolutely insane. So watch out for the subscriptions and especially the, hey, you know what? It's free for this amount of time and you don't have to pay for it till later because you will always forget to turn the subscription off. It's just human nature. That's why they do it. So number five on our list of most expensive items when it comes to personal finance is designer fashion. Now this one I've got mixed feelings on because I'm the guy who 10 years ago bought a pair of Prada shoes and they lasted me for 11 years and they're still going. They just don't quit, they're indestructible. So I would say that that was a great use of money because at the end of the day, they're gonna cost me way less than what buying a new pair of shoes every single year would cost. But that's because I bought quality and something that's timeless. So something that will stand the test of time as far as fashion goes. Now, if they had been this you know, star studded shoe that was wild and crazy. I probably would only worn them for a year, but because they're that classic look and they were a well-made product, they lasted forever. So I think that designer fashion, if it is being bought for quality and longevity can be a great thing, but where definer fashion kills people is on the pieces that go out of fashion the next year and you look like a complete idiot for wearing them. And let's face it, when you get that new brand new purse or you get that flashy flowered jacket, you might get one or two comments where people go, that's really nice, I love it. And you get that, that moment of pride. You know what's better than that moment of pride that you get when somebody goes, wow, I love your purse or your fancy jacket. It's knowing that you can afford to buy another nice jacket a high quality jacket because you didn't spend all your money on things that are trendy and went out of style. Okay, so moving on from designer clothing, let's talk about alcohol. Alcohol is one of those things that can also be not only bad for your wallet, but bad for your health. But let's leave the health argument aside for now on drinking, and let's just talk about the effect that it has on your wallet. Because alcohol can be one of those things that sneaks up on you. You know, you go for that nice dinner somewhere and you think it's gonna be a $50 dinner, you get two dishes, a $20 dish for the missus, a $20 dish for you, and then an appy, and it's 50 bucks, and then all of a sudden you go, you know what, it would be nice to have a glass of wine with this meal, and you think, well, there's no point in me buying just a glass, maybe we should buy a bottle. And before you know it, the cost of your meal has doubled or tripled because of alcohol. Add a couple cocktails and it gets even higher. So alcohol can be one of the biggest drains on our wallet, and that's just when we're going to a restaurant. Now think about you know your habits on the weekend and what you're drinking on a daily basis, and it can be almost a, a bigger expense than groceries. So what we need to know and realize about alcohol is that it is not something that should be a grocery, it should be something that should be a treat. And my wife and I, we're drinkers, having a glass of wine right now. I don't believe for a second that you should not be having a nice drink when you want it, but I do think you need to be careful about buying a $60 bottle of Cabernet when you could be drinking a $10 bottle of Chianti that's just as good. So I promised you I would share the story of my biggest financial drain of my lifetime, and that leads us to number seven, which is luxury vehicles. The biggest financial drain of my lifetime was a BMW M5. This was the car I dreamed of. I bought it in 2009, it was brand new, and over the course of a 12 month period, between putting new tires, a new clutch, and oil changes, and the payments I had to make on that vehicle, it cost me $25,000 to drive that car for just 12 months. Now to put that in perspective, the vehicle I got after it, traded it in on a Ford F-150. Now this truck was as nice, if not nicer than the BMW inside. It was an incredible vehicle. I drove it for seven years. And you know what it cost me to drive it for seven years? That's right, $25,000. I bought it for $50,000 in 2010, drove it all the way till 2017, and sold it for $25,000 for a total cost of driving it of 25,000. It broke once, once, and it wasn't the truck's fault, it was my fault because I heard the brakes squealing, I ignored it, and I blew the brakes on my own truck. So that was the only time it broke, it cost me about $1,200 in repairs, and other than that, the thing was bulletproof and as nice, if not nicer a vehicle than what the BMW was long-term. Family loved it, I loved it, dogs loved it, had room to haul stuff, and never had to worry about it breaking, which was one of the things that always happened with that BMW. And to further put that in perspective, you know, I still have a love of fast cars and really nice cars, 
And back in 2014, I got back into the high performance car market, but this time I was smarter. I didn't buy a brand new luxury car. I bought a 1965 Cobra replica. Now, what was smart about this purchase is this was, car wasn't purchased as a toy. It was purchased as an investment. And it was a vehicle that I bought for $42,000 and three years later sold for $67,000. Now, interestingly enough, that $25,000 theme keeps coming back into play. But what it goes to show is that if you're going to get into nice luxury cars and nice things, sometimes instead of owning a brand new Ferrari, it's better to own a 1967 Ford Mustang that is probably valued about the same price and probably just as unpractical to drive, but will at least hold its value long term. So luxury vehicles are a thing that I think can absolutely destroy your finances, especially if you buy them when you can't afford them like I did in 2010. And they are one of the most important things to avoid. So again, that's my seven things that are the biggest drains on people's finances. If you like this information, if you like the story, if you appreciated the story, do me a favor, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. You control who sees this video and how many people see it. Tell that YouTube algorithm that they should be showing it to more people by hitting that like button. Cheers.